Hello and welcome to Opinion Roundup. I'm Associate Editor of the Moscow Times, Christopher Brennan, here with Opinion Page Editor of the Moscow Times, Michael Baum, talking about the ongoing situation in Ukraine, which had some recent updates, as well as Mike's latest article, Six More Russian Myths About Crimea. So starting off, Mike, I wanted to take a comment from one of our readers, Diverti Adrian, who took issue with your second point, your second myth that you busted about Russian, Russian taking Crimea, that agreements can be annulled, the president who signed them was weak, referring obviously to Boris Yeltsin there and kind of the relations between Ukraine and Russia at that time. He says that the same sort of logic was applied to Yanukovych when Yanukovych fled and Kiev protesters took over mm -hmm. earlier this year. Yeah, I think he brings up a good point, actually. Um, and I, I think it's un unfortunate that the February 21st agreement wasn't signed. Mm -hmm. um, or honored. Uh, honored, exactly. Honored. Mm -hmm. um, I thought that was a, um, a reasonable compromise and agreement. Um, for the opposition, they would have to wait nine months and there would be um, early elections and clearly Yanukovych had no political future and that would have been a diplomatic, peaceful way out. Unfortunately, that didn't happen, but I agree with the reader. Um, I think that um, um, the Budapest agreement should have been uh, honored and I think the February 21st agreement should have been honored. So jumping forward to the present time, Many government buildings in eastern Ukraine, the Donetsk region in particular, have been seized by pro-Russian protesters, separatists, proclaiming the Donetsk People's Republic mm -hmm. in eastern Ukraine. The question on everyone's mind, uh, minds is, is this Crimea 2.0? Is the same sort of annexation, Russian involvement going to happen in eastern Ukraine like it happened in Crimea? Um, no, I, I don't think so, because um, I think Putin knows that um, Russia can't afford eastern Ukraine. Mm -hmm. I think Putin has a different goal entirely, just to be a spoiler, just to make life difficult, to destabilize the situation, um, discredit the uh, Orange Revolution too in mm -hmm. Kiev. I mean, I think that's his main goal is to be the spoiler, to um, uh, get his comeuppance that um, he, he's against Orange Revolutions. And mm -hmm. maybe there'll be another revolution, and maybe there'll, there'll be an opportunity to get a pro-Russian government in Kiev, but he's, his, his objective, I think, is to make life as difficult as possible for Kiev. Kiev has enough problems right now, economic problems. Now you have territorial, uh, political problems, yeah. and this, it may be too much for the Kiev we had, government. We had said before that we didn't expect kind of more activity in eastern Ukraine, mm -hmm. and some would argue that this is the next move of Putin into eastern Ukraine. You don't, you view this as different than what happened before. No, I think it is Putin's move. Mm -hmm. But I think it's limited. It's it's a limited special operation. It's, I think it's it's just to um, bog down the Kiev government in political territorial problems in addition to its economic problems. He I don't think he has the goal of annexing, mm -hmm. but I do think it's 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 um, it's it's a Kremlin operation to make life difficult for Kiev. So in your article, you bring up kind of historical analogies to the U.S. Manifest Destiny, and its history has been brought up a lot by kind of pro-Russian people mm -hmm. as well, talking about correcting historical injustices in Crimea and et cetera. In a place like Eastern Ukraine, can you take this feeling of correcting a historical injustice and can people back down from that? Or is there a nonviolent way to kind of bring groups of people, kind of pro-Russian people and pro-Ukrainian people together? Unlike Crimea, um, I don't think the Kremlin is peddling that, um, that reason, historical injustice. Mm -hmm. uh, Putin mentioned it in his Crimea speech that those parts, those eastern parts of Ukraine were at one point before the Bolshevik Revolution were part of Russia, but it's really not an issue, I think, uh, for, uh, for today. I think the real issue is supposedly protecting the rights of Russians yeah. uh, against discrimination or violence. A more ethnic based. Yeah, ethnic based. But that, that brings up the other question, uh, um, who are the ethnic Russians? And even, even, uh, um, even the Kremlin gets a little confused because they go back and forth between ethnic Russians and Rus Russian speakers, mm -hmm. uh, which is a problem because, um, okay, they're Russian speakers. Um, there's Russian speakers all over the world. Mm -hmm. Do you, uh, is Russia going to intervene for Russian speakers in Brighton Beach? I don't know, in, in Kazakhstan. So um, I think there are, if, if in Crimea there were there was some quasi-legitimate reason uh, based on a historical injustice in Eastern U in Ukraine, clearly no. Also looking forward to kind of what happens next in eastern Ukraine with Russia, the West, and Ukraine. In terms of finding a political solution, 
what do Western powers, Ukrainian authorities, and Russia kind of, how do they work this way out? Or, as Komsomolska Pravda said today, has civil war already started in Ukraine? On certain issues, I think there's, is, there's an easy agreement. For example, giving Russia the status of, of an official language. I think that's a, that's a giveaway. That, that shouldn't be a problem from either side. There, there's more thorny issues such as um, uh, NATO membership. Lavrov wants uh, neutral status. By the way, uh, Ukraine had a neutral status under Yanukovych. That's going to be a lot harder now after the Crimean annexation. In terms of Eastern Ukraine, a lot of people are talking about federalization. Mm -hmm. Pro-Russian forces there are called, in Russian media, kind of people on the side of federalization of Ukraine. Is that something that Ukrainian yeah. authorities and the West is okay with? I mean, the, the devil is in the details. Uh, what I think what Russia means by federalization differs from what Ukraine and, and the U.S. wants. I mean, if it's a Russian version of federalization, mm -hmm. like the Russian Federation, I think that's a, a reasonable offer. But I think the Russians want much more autonomy, uh, basically a separation yeah. um, b between... Um, the eastern parts of Ukraine and the rest of Ukraine, and, I don't, and that's, I, I, I don't think Kiev will ever agree to that. Thank you for being on with us again this week, Mike. Mm -hmm. Make sure to follow the Moscow Times and the moscowtimes.com for all the information updates you need about Ukraine and Russia.